and I am now getting a fault on the Range Rover for back left tire pressure not monitored, which is interesting considering I just had the tires done not too long ago. Got a lot of had a lot of British cars. Behind me are two of the best SUVs that you can buy on the used market. Over here we have the 2011 Land Rover Range Rover, and over here we have the 2016 Range Rover Sport. The differences between them though are quite shocking. Even though they have the same original names, they are completely different cars in just about every single way in terms of comfort, practicality, and obviously design. So let's go ahead and talk about the big key differences between the L322 Range Rover and the L494 Range Rover Sport. So one of the biggest upsides to the L322 as compared to the L494 Sport is the fact that this is the full size. And believe it or not, that does make a huge difference. And it makes a difference in a few ways, actually. First things first, there's visibility. As opposed to the Sport, this thing has miles of visibility. In the Sport, especially in later models, a lot of the visibility is pretty much ruined by the fact that they tried to make it look sporty. The problem is SUVs aren't sporty. Look at things like the full-size Range Rover from this year, the G-Wagon, the Toyota Land Cruiser. They're not sporty. So trying to create a sporty SUV means you essentially ruin all rear visibility that you could ever need. The problem with that comes when you're driving the Sport on even something like a highway or interstate and you need to be able to change lanes, but you can't because there is a pillar the size of Arkansas in your rear quarter panel. It's also much more practical. It has the split tailgate, and believe it or not, when you're loading and unloading items, that can make a huge difference. You also have better off-road features, such as a better terrain response system and locking differentials, and on top of all of that, in the L322, you have much more usable interior space. The thing is, though, where they have slanted the roof down in later models, it has taken up a large amount of the interior space and it just feels crammed in the sport, whereas the L322 feels like you have, well, a full city in the back seat. Also in the sport, you feel rather crammed next to your passenger, and in this, you probably wouldn't even know that there was a passenger sitting next to me right now, even with a wide angle lens. I think there's just something to be said about a car feeling large. Now, the thing is the Rolls-Royce Ghost that we have feels like a large car because it is actually a really large car. This feels like a large car in a sense of it's large, but not difficult to drive. The Ghost, on the other hand, is absolutely impossible to drive in tight spaces. This, though, is somehow maneuverable, even though it feels rather enormous. Add to that, the L322 is also a much more comfortable driving experience. The seats and the seating position are both superior to that in the newer Sport. It also has a much softer suspension setup, allowing for better dampening than it does on the newer Sports. The new Sports have a very firm suspension setup, whereas on the L322 it's more refined and feels much more sophisticated and better to drive over rough roads. The seating position is also more comfortable for me personally, because you sit much higher up than you do in the Sport. Now I have adjusted the Sport's seating position to where I feel like I'm sitting higher up, but in the L322, you are actually sitting much higher up. It's something that I feel gives the driver a lot of confidence behind the wheel, and sitting down lower makes me feel like I'm trying to drive a sports car that is the size of Atlanta, Georgia. Overall, I have to say that this is probably one of the biggest points for me personally. The seating position and the comfort of the seats makes a world of difference, especially driving around town and on a long road trip. When you're just popping down to the store, it doesn't make too much of a difference that you feel like you're driving a bit more sporty of an SUV. But when you're on a long journey, a long road trip, 
one of the most annoying things is feeling cocooned and tight in this small car. Even though the Sport is rather large itself, you feel tight. Whereas in this, you sit high, you feel commanding, and you feel like you are in control of everything going on. It's comfortable, it's relaxing, and it is the way a Range Rover should be designed. Unfortunately, in newer sports and newer full-size models, that's no longer the case. You sit much lower down in order to give a more cocooned feeling. That's not something I personally like. Also on the topic of comfort is suspension. In the Sport, the dampening is so firm, I feel like I am actually driving the M4. It has surprised me still to this day how uncomfortable it is to drive the Sport over normal roads. Now, I have driven the Sport at this point 1,500 miles in the two months we've owned it, and I'm still upset and disappointed about how firm the suspension is. When I'm driving an SUV, particularly a luxury SUV, I feel like it should be comfortable and refined and smooth, and in the Sport, it is really not. When you compare it to the suspension on the L322, you feel like you are in a completely different car. Speaking of the Rolls-Royce Ghost, it has by far the softest suspension of any car that I've ever driven. However, the Range Rover is right there next to it. If you were to blindfold someone and ask them when they got in the car which one they thought they were in, they would be hard pressed to guess correctly. The L322 suspension is comfortable, refined, and smooth, especially over bumpy roads, and that's the way it should be. The Sport, on the other hand, is tuned for more, well, obviously, sporty driving. I'm sitting here arguing that no one drives their SUV sporty, so why does it need firm suspension? At the very least, wouldn't it make sense to have a sport mode on the suspension that would allow it to stiffen up a bit, but leave normal suspension for normal driving? However, on that model Sport, that is not something that is offered. Add to the fact, it also has fewer cheap plastics on the interior, which is something that I found very interesting. Newer models, in my mind, should have more expensive and nicer materials, however the opposite is true. Newer models in the Range Rover Sport have much cheaper plastics, and I'm personally just not a fan of that. I like the feeling of durability that I have in my L322. You could argue that yes, this was more expensive than the Sport when it was new, and I would argue back with that at plastic doesn't cost that much money. And speaking of purchase price, there is the topic of used purchase price. Our Sport was double the price that this L322 was. Double the price for less of a car. The thing is, the Sport had fewer mileage when we bought it, but they were both five years old. Both of them were five years old when we purchased them, this being a 2011 model year that was purchased in 2016, and the Sport being a 2016 model year that was purchased in 2021. We're talking about $24,000 on this car, and $45,000 on the Sport. Why? Here's the thing though, L322 Range Rovers still to this day continue to depreciate like rocks. While most things have gone up in value, trade-in value on this has remained stable for the past year and a half. Which is surprising considering even our Aston Martin has gained about $15,000 in equity over the past year. This though has not. I've done well to actually keep right side up on the loan. This car new was $93,000 and five years later it was $23,000. That's a shocking difference in depreciation over five years. The Sport, on the other hand, was in the 70s new, and it was purchased in the 40s. That's only $30,000 in depreciation as opposed to $70,000. Someone lost on this car what the Sport cost new. Jesus. And you might say the Sport has fewer miles, and it has a Land Rover warranty, and it was CPO'd when we purchased it. And all of that is true. However, here's the thing. That warranty was an extra $4,300. On top of that, the base price of the car was about double of what I paid on this. So when you consider that, I have not done $27,000 in repairs. Close, but not yet. $27,000 in repairs on this L322. $27,000 of a difference. You could rebuild the engine and transmission for $27,000. Add to the fact that you get much more car for your money than you do in the L494 2016 Sport. It blows my mind. So now, let's talk a little bit more about this one. Because, as I've just harped on it for the past five minutes, 
it does have some really good points that makes it probably a better car for most people. There is, in fact, in the Sport, a much more modern interior. And as much as I was just saying that the Range Rover full-size L322 is more comfortable, it's not like this thing skips on anything. You have heated and cooled seats. You have automatic climate control. You have everything you would expect from a modern luxury SUV, as well as the largest panoramic sunroof I have ever seen. This thing is a full sheet of glass in a modern mansion, and it's just, it's massive. The interior feels so much more modern, so much cooler in a regard. When you drive this car, you feel like you're a 20-something-year-old driving to Target after picking up your Starbucks on the weekend, and there's a youthness feeling about this car that the L322 doesn't have. The L322 has a, a spot of old man to it. Whereas this car feels young, it feels fun. And I, I think that's really down to the way the interior is designed. In the L322, it's, it's, it's a more old-fashioned approach on luxury. It's soft suspension, comfortable materials, and everything is quite smooth. Whereas in this, it has a more modern take on what luxury should be, which is refined yet sporty. And for some reason, that's where the market has just gone. Luxury now means sporty. So while I do feel like some of the interior plastics are cheaper, I have to say it does feel very nice in here. It has Bluetooth audio, it has better multimedia inputs, and it has a much more friendly infotainment system. One thing I will say about the infotainment system, it does seem to be based on the same general system that the L322 was based on. In fact, it shares a lot of key similar features. However, in this sport from 2016, it has a much more updated interface, and it's a little bit more pleasing to look at, and it seems to be a bit more responsive in day-to-day -day use. On top of that, you also have the cameras easily accessible to you in the L 494. There's also better parking sensors in the Sport, and it's not that the sensors themselves in the L322 are bad, it's more of the way that they work is not as elegant. The L322 just beeps and yells at you when you get close to an object, however, the Sport shows you where the objects are coming from. It is one of the things that I've always admired about BMW's sonar system, where it will show you where the objects are starting to form around the car. This isn't quite that good, however, it does start to show you with little lines coming closer to the car where objects are starting to get close, and I do appreciate that a lot. There's also the automated tailgate, which is a very random point to make, and again, if you're used to driving any modern car, it's something that you won't even know that you love so much. However, I daily drive a 10-year-old used Range Rover, and my tailgate is not automated. I have to manually open the tailgate. Now, it's a little thing, but it makes a big difference on a day-to-day -day use. Sometimes I'm carrying a lot of stuff and just need to be able to get the tailgate open quickly without putting it all down. And in the L494 Sport, you have that option because the tailgate is automated. What has always surprised me is that they could have done that on the L322, but I have always suspected they were saving features for the L405, which is never something I'm a fan of. You also have a lot of the mechanical kinks worked out from the early 5.0 liter V8 models. Now, as much as I love the 5 liter V8 in my Range Rover, I understand it is essentially the Achilles heel of the Range Rover. The 5 liter V8 is notoriously one of the most unreliable engines ever used in a Range Rover, and it just so happens to be the one that I love the most. However, there is no denying that it is silky smooth when it works correctly. The problem is, models with the 5 liter V8 had pretty bad timing chain guide issues, cooling issues, there were a lot of common issues. Pretty much every part of the engine and cooling system is a common issue on the L322. Because this model was developed so many years later, the 3 liter V6, it had a lot of those common issues worked out, although there are still reports of timing chain issues on early 3 liter V6 models. However, reports are few and far between when compared to the L322, where pretty much every single one of them has an issue with timing chain at some point. There's also, as you can clearly see, a much more modern exterior design on the Range Rover Sport than the old full size. Now this makes sense. They are five years apart. In fact, the base design of that L322 was launched in 2002, 2003. So of course, this is going to have a much newer design. It, it was designed 10 years apart. However, 
regardless of that, regardless of how far apart they were designed, it is actually very pretty. Still to this day, even though this design came out in 2013, it is still one of the prettiest and almost most striking SUVs on the road. It's not shocking like some SUVs that are just hideous to look at. It's purposeful and elegant and sophisticated, yet enthusiastic. It's really good. The Sport is also so much more engaging to drive and so much better on fun roads. The L322 wafts a bit, it's a bit floaty, and it's not necessarily the most engaging sporty experience, which would make sense. That's not what it's built for. But as much as I think a luxury SUV should be built to be comfortable, it is nice to be able to drive around mountain roads, which are all around us in Chattanooga, and be able to actually have an engaging drive. When you put the transmission in sport mode and you start driving it like a slower sports car, you start to realize how good this thing actually is to drive. To me, most Land Rover SUVs are not good to drive. They're comfortable to drive. This is the opposite. And last, but most certainly not least, this car is warrantied through Land Rover. When we bought it, it had three months left of the CPO warranty, and then we extended that by buying Land Rover's uh, extended used warranty. The warranty itself is a zero dollar deductible, and it was $4,300 for two years. It's not the greatest warranty in the world, but knowing that we have a Land Rover warranty on our Land Rover does give it that peace of mind that uh, I think every Land Rover owner wishes they could have. Now though, let's talk about which one of these cars is victorious and for what points they are best for. And obviously for comfort, the winning point goes to the L322. Nothing on the road, aside from a Rolls Royce, is more comfortable than a full-size Range Rover. I still stand by that. They have such soft suspension. It is truly one of the most comfortable cars out there. The driving position gives you confidence and makes you feel like you are in control of everything going on. Sitting in traffic is not a chore because you can actually see what's going on. You feel safe, comfortable, and by far it is the most refined car that we have. Daily use obviously has to go to the L494. It is by far a better daily driver than the L322. Suspension aside, as far as daily tech and, and daily modern conveniences go, the L322 is a bit too dated to have a lot of the conveniences that we're used to uh, with our daily drivers. Next up is the point of value, and obviously that can't go to anything else other than the L322. The thing is that warranty, as much comfort as it brings me, I still understand that it is very rare that you will spend 25,000 extra dollars trying to fix something on an L322. By that point, you are better off going and buying another L322 and then another L322 instead of rebuilding one. $25,000 in repairs is a substantial amount. And sure, over 15 years of ownership with this car, that might be where we end up. But overall, in the short term, it's not going to equal out $25,000 in two years that are left on this warranty. So with that, value can go to nothing else other than the L322. It is half the price and it is more car for your money. There's also the topic of servicing costs, which the L494 completely wins against, against the L322. Obviously, I love that supercharger. Obviously, servicing costs on this are better because there are fewer common major issues. The major issues on the L322 with its 5 liter V8 are near endless, whereas in this, even the common issues and the expensive issues are solved because of the warranty. Obviously, you do still have to service the car, but overall maintenance is cheaper because of that warranty. Fun would be a toss-up. The Sport is much more fun to bang out of a corner, whereas the L322 is much more fun to drive up a mountain, for example. I would have to say overall I would prefer the L322 for fun because to me driving sporty I would drive one of our sports cars but if you only have one car and you want something sporty this is pretty good. And as far as which one you should pick as your only car I'm gonna have to go with the L494 here. With its warranty even though it is double the price it does have a warranty it does have the tech that we expect out of a car for daily use 
And overall, it, it's just a bit of a better package for daily use. Now, if you're like me and you want something that's a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more scary to drive every day, the L3T2 is great. But if you want something that's going to be a bit more on the reliable side and a bit easier to maintain and service, the L494 Sport from 2016 is a better option. It also has a more modern interior and for most people, they believe it looks better. Now, that's not something I personally subscribe to, but I can understand how someone would think this car looks better. It is most certainly a more modern design. You have to go L494, unless you are an enthusiast. For most people, the L494 is the one you should pick. For enthusiasts or someone looking for a used Range Rover for a cheap price, the L322, you can't beat it. Really, as far as luxury value goes in any market, the L322 remains king. It always has, and I believe it always will. Mainly because it's hard to get more car for $12,000. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified every time we upload more Land Rover content. Once again, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.